Bienvenidos, señoras y señores, to another episode of the Bleed Lows Podcast. This episode of the Bleed Lows Podcast is brought to you by BetOnline.ag. BetOnline is your number one source for all your betting needs. Get the latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for football, college football, basketball, boxing, hockey, golf, and more. Bet Online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wagers, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games are available to play right from your phone. So head to the website or use your mobile device and sign up today. Get in on the action. Remember to use the promo code BELIEVE, B-L-E-A-V, for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet Online, where the game starts. And joining us on the Carne Asada is a former major leaguer. He is the pride of East L.A. He is Ricky Romero. Ricky, ¿cómo estás, amigo? Todo bien, bro. Thank, thank you so much for having me. No, thanks for coming on the show. I, we, we wanted to have you on the show because you have a baseball camp. This is the fourth annual Ricky Romero uh, high school baseball camp that's on November 26th. It's invite only, so I, I want to get into this, but first I just want to start with a simple Ricky, why'd you why'd you put this camp on? This is four years now that you're doing this. Yeah, man. It, it kind of started as a a bit of a, a joke on our group chat. It's it's honestly that's how it started. And and um Beto Duran was one of the catalysts of it. And he goes, Man, like nobody really ever has a camp down there for for the inner city kids. And you're probably uh one of the only few that's ever made it out of East LA, like either Garfield or Roosevelt. And and I kind of started laughing. I was like, well, I mean, because it is a lot of work. These guys do a lot of work behind behind the scenes. There's a lot of organizing and ordering stuff and gear and making sure everything's running smooth. And I said, you guys do all of that. <clears throat> I'll show up. And and <laughs> and uh, and and it kind of obviously they have I have my input and everything and, any, and everything that goes on. But I was it was kind of that was kind of the running joke. And then all of a sudden we started coming together. I started uh, texting friends, former big leaguers. I mean. We've had Sergio Romo, Jesse Chavez, J.P. Crawford come out to this camp. So we've had a handful of, of uh, current big leaguers and former big leaguers come out and help out. And and I think by the end of the day, everyone leaves completely satisfied. And I think that's what kind of uh, warms my heart more than anything is seeing the kids just go out there. I mean, we don't make a dime off of it. We don't we don't charge or anything like that. So that's why um, when when the idea came, I was like, you know what, let's do it. Let's let's do it. And and once once it came together, it's kind of addicting. You kind of just have to have it every single year. And um, again, I have a great group of uh, friends that I put it all together and have worked hard behind the scenes to to make it happen. And, you know, and obviously me being the face of it is just it makes me that much more proud to 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 be from East L.A. Right. I mean, I, I think the biggest thing is being able to um to talk to these kids and, and make them believe. I mean, I think a lot of times um, I know growing up, I, I always say, I wish I had somebody like this, somebody to look up to somebody that, that I could say, man, I know this guy. I, I know this guy and he made it and I can make it too. And, and I think sometimes we let, we get lost in that transition. And I think I just never really let anything get in the way of me getting to the goal of, you know, one day pitching in the big leagues. Not that, I mean, I feel like everyone dreams of that, right? I mean, you grow up, I mean, Dodger Stadium was my backyard growing up in East L.A., and I loved going to the games and and experiencing that and, and wondering what it would be like to be a big leaguer. And once I got a taste of that, it was like, OK, how can I give back to the community? How can I, uh, you know, uh, make these guys, you know, believe and, and, and continue to work hard and not give up on their on their dreams of maybe, you know, going to college? And, and then, you know, when you go to college and and anything can happen from there. And, um, and, and I think that's, that's the biggest reason why I think I've been able to, uh, uh, hold this, this camp together and, and continue to do it yearly. And hopefully it just continues to grow at the end of the day. Again, it's, if, if we inspired one, two kids and then we've done our job. Uh, Roger, can you put up the graphic? Because like Ricky said, there's a lot of people that have worked on this. So we need to, we show off here, all, uh, the, the <laughs> talent, look how clean this is, how professional it is. Um, <laughs> Ricky, I want to get into it because you brought it up. I mean, you are an East LA kid. So look, for some of us who, who didn't grow up there or all they know is the stereotype, right? They either mm -hmm. know, Hey, it's p colors, you know, it's Pac-Man, you know, going in there, or if it's stand and deliver, you know, it's just <laughs> a bunch of cholos in East LA. Take me back, Ricky. What, what is it really like growing up in East LA? Because there's East LA, there's Boyle Heights, you know, what, and you trust said me. it. 
like you said it, you know, I mean, Beto is a friend of the Canesa, and we all know Beto likes to just give <laughs> everybody a hard time and call, you know, just, you know, anything you say you're wrong and Beto's going to call you out on it. So mm -hmm. for our audience who all they know is the stereotype of East L.A., what what was it like growing up in East L.A. for you? You know what? I mean, I, I credit both my parents um, and the, and the, they're both my like my heroes and and in my life, you know, to this day, I still look up to them a lot in in so many ways and shaping me the, the man that I am, the, the, the father that I am and the husband that I am. Um, and, you know, growing up there, they, they always, you know, it was school, 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 you're going to do good in school because, you know, that's going to be your ticket to the next level, uh, whether it's, uh, you know, university and studying something that you're going to get into, or maybe playing baseball. And my dad always reminded me of that. And, and, <clears throat> The, the biggest thing for me, like growing up in East L.A., and I witnessed, you know, Carfield High School for three years and Roosevelt, the Boyle Heights area for for a year. And and, and, and the similarities of it all is just, you know, how tight knit communities are, you know, that you, you see it in the East L.A. classic. Right. I mean, how the community really rallies behind both schools and and the and how amazing of a event that is. And and I think that's that's what it shows. I mean, the Mexican culture really comes out right there and and. Um, and showing, you know, the, the true meaning of family and, and unity and, and, and stuff like that. And and I think that's that's what I had my whole life. And, you know, I mean, obviously there's all these stereotypes and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, I think my both my mom and dad did a really good job in 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 uh, in raising me and, and making sure I was respectful and making sure that um, they uh, my dad coached me up until I left for high school. And, and I think he did a good job of always volunteering his time and, and trying to keep kids off the streets and stuff like that. And, and, and we, we held our, you know, little league team as, together as, as long as we could. And then all of a sudden everyone kind of goes their separate ways, but it, it, it was one of those things where, again, um, I think, uh, early on, obviously you just never think it's going to happen again. you you always wonder what it would be like to be a big leaguer and anything and, and all that stuff. And then you go to the, you know, for me, I, I took the Division One route, went to Cal State Fullerton, and that was a culture shock itself. I mean, coming out of East LA, and and again, the stereotypes pop up, right? Like, who is this bald in the head in Mexican <laughs> coming here, you know, uh, from East LA? And then, and then from there, you kind of earn your your stripes there, um, and and become, you know, one of the best pitchers in the country, win a national championship there, become a first rounder, make it to the big leagues, and e even, you know, when when you get to to that level, you're like, all right, who's this bald headed Mexican, you know? And, and I think I always took pride in that. And I always took pride. Um, I always made sure I always told the media, I was like, you know, don't put Ricky Romero from Los Angeles, California. I want to see the East Los Angeles there just because I was pride. I was pr proud of where, where I was coming from. And, and, and it just, it just meant that much to me. And again, I knew at the time when I was pitching in the big leagues, I was a, a lot, lots of kids, high school kids looked up to me and, 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 you know, I was going to do whatever, it, whatever I could to, to represent them the, the right, the right way and, and, and make sure that those stereotypes went away. And, and hopefully I did my job. And that's why, you know, it brings me back to this camp. I go back there and I talk to them and I, and, and, and I let them ask me all the questions they want. And, and I think at the end of the day, it, it's always a successful one. I think every time, I think after every single one, no joke, Juan, um, I've come home, I've, I put my head on the pillow and I'm like, I can't stop smiling. It's like one of those things where it just leaves you really fulfilled. And I don't think really lots of people can relate to it because it's, it again, I mean, guys have camps left and right. And sometimes the guys don't even show up. I'm there front and center. I want to be around. I want to be floating around, talking to as many kids as possible and, and making them feel comfortable. And I know how it is, man. Sometimes us Mexican kids sometimes don't want to ask questions. We get shy and you don't want to ask the wrong question. You don't want to look dumb in front of your friends, this and that. Well, you know, I'm there to provide that and say, you know what? Like, there's no stupid questions here, man. Like, just ask whatever it is that needs to be asked and, and I'll do my best. I was in you guys' shoes. I was practicing, you know, at Garfield High School, Belvedere Park. I was practicing um you know at roosevelt high school and uh uh i'm drawing blank on the on the park we used to practice there uh, uh evergreen park i believe and um you know we didn't have a high school field so the fact that garfield has allowed us to come back and use their baseball field that is brand new it's about a year old i mean it, it's special in in so many ways again i mean we're there to to uh to be uh 
great role models for the community and and just again i mean to just show that hey if i do it if i did it you guys can do it too man i mean it's just it takes a lot of hard work a lot of dedication and and staying in the right path ricky you mentioned the east la classic uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with that part of of los angeles that's a big rivalry there garfield versus roosevelt <laughs> now I got to ask you, you went three years of high school in Garfield, and then your senior year, you went to Roosevelt. I Was did. there heat when you made that change? Like, were people <laughs> looking at you, like, different? Like, what the hell are you doing, man? Uh, yes and no. I mean, at the same time, a lot of the guys from uh, Roosevelt High School I had played um, Little League with or was currently playing, you know, travel ball team uh travel ball with them so i it was like very well known we all knew each other and stuff like that but i i think between you know coaches and administration yes there was a lot of fighting going back and forth we're not gonna let him play like this is illegal and i can't believe you guys took him and there was a lot of back and forth i'm not gonna lie i mean to the point where my first at bat against uh garfield high school i got plunked and then oh. um uh, <laughs> and I was I was pitching that day, and I believe that was the only no hitter I think I threw in high school was against <laughs> Garfield High School. So go figure, right? I mean, so yes, yeah, so, I mean at the end of the day, you know uh, the way I see it, I mean I I know there's a huge rivalry and stuff like that, but you know I was again just proud to represent who I was, who my family was. I was proud to represent being a a Romero like like my father, and and that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to make them proud, and and they had shown me the the way they had shown me the path and it was up to me to go and grab it and that's what i did i mean my dad had this vision at a very very young age from from when i was very young he had this vision of me hopefully one day pitching in the big leagues and i always thought he was crazy and uh and it happened man i mean it it, it was crazy now you mentioned there's a lot of people that work on this to put this camp together and it's being held at garfield high school how prepared were you for that aspect of putting on this? Because I'm sure you had to shake a lot of hands, kiss a lot of babies. I mean, it, it's, it, I, I'm sure, you know, some people hate doing that kind of stuff. It makes them feel uncomfortable, <laughs> but it's part of the job, right? I mean, you got to schmooze and people may say, oh, you ain't real. You're out there being fake. It's like, hey, if I want this to get done, I got to play the game. You know what? I mean, I go back to this one. What I what I was telling you earlier. I always wonder what it would be like. Well, what it would be like to be a, a big leaguer, and and I knew it came with the territory. And you know, even when I head back to Toronto, my my kids are you know my eight year old now asks the questions of like, Dad, why why do people want to take a picture with you? Why do people want you to sign their ball? Why do people? And I'm explaining to him, and not once in my life has have I ever. Um, mind that at all like i i love it man i mean it, it, it's something that that i feel like you're, you're privileged to do i mean not everyone gets to do that right not everyone gets to walk into a room and people say oh man like there he is like i always saw myself as, as a normal human being even when i go back to toronto right now man uh you know my there's a lot of people that are witnessing my wife being one of them she it's always like the, she's like, why? How do the security people know you? How do the ground screw guys know you? I was like, because I always took the time to have a conversation with them. I always took the time to 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 uh, to say hello. Like I was, I never thought I was above and beyond somebody just because I was a big leaguer. I, at the end of the day, I'm a normal, I'm, I'm a normal human being first, more than anything. And I think that's where sometimes people need to realize about us athletes. We're, we're human beings first. We're we're fathers. We're husbands first. We're more, you know, more than anything. And yes, they, you guys want to see us succeed and this and that. But sometimes it doesn't happen, and and nobody takes it harder than us. Trust me. And and I think, um, I think. Uh, I realized at a very young age, again, my mom and my dad were huge on that. Make sure you're always respectful and make sure you always say hello to, to the, to the person cleaning, you know, the toilets at school, make sure you always say, thank you. Make sure you always do this. And that's stuff that I try and install on my kids now and, and, and say, Hey, make sure you're always polite, please. Thank you. And, 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 and stuff like that. And, um, and I think that's why going back, it's no, it's no problem, man. I, I love, for me, you can we, you and I can sit here and talk for the next two hours about baseball and my career and and everything that happened and 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 it, I, I would be more than happy. So it's never really one of those things where I'm like ah oh, dreading it, like oh I gotta go say hi to these people. No, nah, it's it's always like ask me, man, ask me the question, ask me whatever it is that you gotta ask me. And even parents, like we have a little Q and A with them, uh, or we did last year, I believe, for the first time, where I was like, you know what, 
it's enough about the players they're stretching let's have a q a with the parents let's let let us let me or ask me the question whatever is on your mind like what is it going to take for my kid or this and that and it, there's some questions that are realistic there's some questions that are unrealistic but you know i don't have the answers to everything but if it again if there's any way shape or form that i can help parents um then again we're, we're we're doing our job and this that's our biggest goal just making sure that this these kids see it believe it and then go and achieve it I want to take this time to remind people that we're talking to a former all-star in 2011. He was an all-star for the, the Azulejos of Toronto. What cracks me up, Ricky, is I just realized right now you have a little bit of Canadian still in you, the way you said Toronto, because I feel <laughs> like that's how the Canadians say it. Like, well, out here people will be like Toronto, right? They pronounce yeah. the T at the end, but the Canadians, they, they say Toronto. <laughs> so I, I need to know. How did a, a kid from East L.A., a Mexican kid, how did you adapt when you showed up in Canada to be a major leaguer? Because I got to tell you, I went with a group of, uh, of my friends, and they're all from East L.A., right? They all grow up. We showed up in Boston, and people said to us, where are you guys from? And then we we're like, oh, we're from California. And they said, you're from East L.A. And we were like, why did you say East L.A.? That seems pretty specific. And they said, Oh, because of your accent. And I was like, what are you talking about? I mean, no, nobody needs to LA. <laughs> but uh, so what was the Canadian experience for you? It was it was different, just like it was, you know, going from Roosevelt High School to Cal State Fullerton. It was a culture shock. And then obviously from from uh, from Cal State Fullerton to uh, minor league ball culture shock. And then you get called up to Toronto, to the big leagues, to the show, to the pinnacle of it all. And you go there and first, the first thing is one, it's different money. And I was like, I'm not, you know, that's completely different. You have to get change for everything and this and that and get exchanges. Um, at the time in 2009, there wasn't really like a, a Canadian uh, phone plan. So you had to kind of get a phone out there or get a, or go with the company that had the Canadian plan. So all that stuff was stuff that you don't know there's no mexican food yet i have yet to find real mexican food out there even though people claim that there's real mexican food i said no chance um i remember beto saying hey have you found tapatio out there yet and i was like nah man i haven't <laughs> so you know it was it was definitely different but it was again toronto's is 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 a place where there's so many cultures man it's it's a melting pot of, of different cultures and it's awesome and um, obviously I was shy, quiet when I first got there. And once I got to know the city and got to know the people, it was beyond amazing. One of the greatest things to ever happen to me was to play there, honestly. And even going back now, it's like the way you're, that I'm treated and things didn't end up smooth there when I, when they ended. Right. I mean, I, I didn't end the way I wanted it to end, but at the end of the day, I think people appreciated, appreciated the, the, the love, the care that I had for that organization, for that team, for that city. I mean, my wife, is Canadian. Uh, my kids are half Canadian. We have a house there that we still go back to twice, three times a year. And I mean, my ties there are, are deeply rooted, kind of like East LA. I mean, it, it's it's the place where, um, where you know, East LA saw me grow up. It's 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 Toronto was the place where I grew up to to becoming a big leaguer and to understanding what it was like to to stay in the big leagues and stuff like that. So I mean, it, you know, both both places have very very significant. Uh, you know things in my life and and i and and i couldn't be more proud to to be from east la and and have played for the toronto blue jays you, you mentioned culture shock and i know what you're talking about because i was raised in orange county uh, <laughs> but i also lived in koreatown so i i know the, the 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 differences between la and orange county you went to to school in cal state fullerton look when i was in orange county and i was a kid my mother wouldn't even let me wear my raider starter jacket <laughs> because she was afraid people me even a confundir con un cholo and i was like this is orange orange county there's no cholos here right but does your camp do is there a way to be able to teach these young kids those culture shocks when you're moving up in levels you mentioned you know from going from high school to college and then if you get drafted and you go to the minor leagues is there anything that you can teach them that will prepare it or is that just on the job training right there yeah i mean <clears throat> i i don't know if you're allowed to use cuss words in this go podcast ahead or not, yes. yeah but be I real always, be, I, be you ricky <laughs> i always say i always tell them um, i mean and this is something i learned early on you can't one you can't be scared you, you got to be fearless when 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 you, if you want to get to that level you got to be 
I, I say, you got to be a motherfucker. You really do. You have to learn and you have to find it within you. Because if you're this nice guy and this and that, then we know that sometimes nice guys get taken advantage of and and you just you never hit your peak. And I feel like once I found that that spark plug, which was, you know, from senior year of high school to going into uh, Cal State Fullerton, it took me a while to find my edge there. And once, you know, a coach came up to me and said, hey, I want to see this is a kid come out. I want to see this. This guy that I that I saw back at Roosevelt High School, I want to see that confidence. I want to see that cockiness. And I was like, oh, so you want to you want me to be me in a confident way? And I was like, OK, boom. And that's where I took off in, at Cal State Fullerton sophomore year. Uh, quick story, sophomore year, I get told like, hey, man, you ha you haven't lived up to anything that we thought you were going to live up to. You're going to go back to the bullpen. What did I do instead of tucking my head in between my, my legs? I said, all right, what is it that I need to get better at? I'm going to wake up. I'm going to look myself in the mirror and say, what is it that I need to get be better? Because I'm going to pitch here and I'm going to be a key component to this team, but I got to stay ready. Sure enough, first week, two of the three starters go down. Um, and I'm, I'm there when, when the bell rung, they're like, Rick, you ready? Boom, let's go. That year we, we win a national championship. Uh, me and, and Jason Windsor were the one, two punch of Cal State Fullerton. All-American, play for Team USA, was the only player that year to win a national championship and, and win a gold medal for Team USA, the only player in the country to do that. And, and this is coming from in fall ball saying, hey, man, you, you've been a failure up to this point. And, and I think that's what I try and the message that I try and relay to them. Like, you're going to you're going to hit bumps. People are going to say, hey, man, you, you stunk. You suck. Like, let's go pick it up. And it's up to you to say, OK, let's go. Let's strap it on. Let, let's 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 work. And and I tell that to my eight year old kid, like I I you know not in not in a harsh way, but I'm like life isn't easy, man. Like you're gonna hit your bumps. You're gonna you know when things are not going your way, you know whether it's on the baseball field or the soccer field or at school, like it it, it, it you gotta keep working. You gotta you gotta look at yourself and say, okay, where where do I need to be better? How do I how do I get better? Um, use your coaches, use your resources and, and stuff like that. And I think that's the message. You got to be a motherfucker, man. And, and that's what I was for, for a while. I'm not going to lie. I'm not trying to be cocky or anything like that, but that, that's really what it is. Like you can't be scared of the situation. If, if you've worked so hard for something, Juan, if you've worked so hard for something and, and you got to get to that point, nothing should be able to stop you. Because again, baseball, as we all know, is a game of failure. And as cliche as that sounds, it really is. It's a game of failure. And, and, if, and, and you got to know, you got to go in expecting that, but saying, okay, if I fail once, how am I going to get back up and continue to climb to that mountain that I want to get to? Now, at your camp, you guys stress, you know, you gave out college information, right? Like you were telling the story about how, you know, baseball, you saw baseball as your way of, of going to, to, to college. Mm -hmm. Now, did you recognize that very early on that say, hey, man, the way I'm going to get to college is through sports? Or is it just because that was your love of sports? There wasn't anything else you wanted to do. Like, I'm going to be an architect. I'm going to be like something else. It was just like, look, I like playing sports. And if I can get to college playing sports, then I'm going to do that. All right. I'll be honest with you. I never in my wildest dreams thought I'd be playing Division One baseball. I didn't even know what Division One baseball was. I was a naive kid out of East L.A., man. Hey, where, where, where do you think you're going to go? Uh, I'd probably just go play at ELAC and then play for, you know, through my eligibility and um, and then go find a job and get married, get married, have kids. You know what? what just what happens usually. Right. <laughs> and and I just I, I I was so naive to it because I, I didn't know. I didn't even know scouts, what scouts meant. I didn't know what a division one scholarship meant. I didn't know what getting your clearinghouse done. I don't know what an SAT was like. I didn't know any of that. I, I really didn't. I learned on the fly. And um, my senior year, when I started doing good, what changed my my uh, my career around there was an article was printed of me on the L.A. Times. And it was a whole like, you know, a whole thing about a feature on on me and, and who I was and this and that. And I think uh, the, the coach at the time at Cal State Fullerton, the pitching coach, said he read it and he goes, why are we not on this kid? I need this kid. And that's kind of where the buzz started. It was. USC was knocking on my door. And this is, I live uh, right in the heart of East LA on uh, right off of uh, um, Downey Road and uh, and, and right in between uh, Whittier and Downey Road on, on, on Bonnie Beach. Um, and and, and I, I had big time scouts, big time division one coaches coming to my house in East LA, man. And then, and, and it was, it was, we, we were 
it was there was so much overjoy. Like my parents would, we would sit there and they the, the, the coaches would leave and we'd just look at each other and start laughing. We're like, what is going on? Like, what is what is this? And you, I'm telling you, USC was the first one to be knocking on my door. And that guy, the coach there was sitting there every single week trying to recruit me to come to USC. And um, and <clears throat> as much as I wanted to go there at the time, you know, I had a bad uh, uh, recruiting visit experience that I was like, you know what, this place isn't for me. And I remember when Cal State Fullerton hosted me. I was like, this is it. This is the place that's calling my name. And um, <clears throat> and then from there, it just, you know, uh, the rest is history, obviously. But I, I didn't know any of that, man. I mean, it, it was all brand new. Everything was brand new. And I was learning on the fly in, in high school. We had no idea. I mean, I was drafted and I didn't even know what that meant. Um, I was drafted, I think, in the 37th round by the Boston Red Sox. And that was a big deal amongst, you know, the, the 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 high school group and man like Ricky got drafted is he going to the big leagues and I'm like I don't know I don't think so I think you go to the minor leagues and then I saw the the contract a few months later and I was like oh shoot they were they're gonna sign me for like a thousand bucks I was like thank goodness I didn't go there I had a college uh paid for over here so so yeah man I was naive I was I was I didn't know very much stuff um and and I think that's that's another thing why we host this camp because we say hey you know what um if, if you guys have any questions, if schools start coming at you, I'm, it's, stuff has changed so much nowadays. It's it's completely different now. You're getting paid and stuff like that. And as an as a college athlete, so that changes completely everything if you're a high level athlete. But, you know, we try and keep the, the DMs open and, and to the camp, um, to the Ricky Romero Foundation camp uh, Instagram page. And and um, and if anybody has serious questions and we try and answer them as as, as, as good as we can. And, and, and again. Just try to be there for the for the guys and whoever wants that help. It's it's open. How hard is that, Ricky? I mean, you're an impressionable kid in high school. Obviously, you hear USC, you know, it's like, well, I I, I should go to USC. But obviously for you, Cal State Fullerton w w was a better fit. Like when I hear these kids say, hey, a division two or a division three will give you a full ride. Oh, I don't want to do that. I want to go to a division one. Or I've heard a lot of players have success at a junior college and then transfer later on to a university yeah. in your experience. I mean, I, I, you went to a pretty good school. I mean, you guys ended up winning the college world series there. Like how important is that? Is it just better just to get in? And like you said, be a motherfucker and they will find you. Yes. Yes. I, 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 I can't stress that enough. And, and I think there's this whole, like, Oh, if I'm not D1, I'm not going to make it. And I always say this, go look at a big league roster and you tell me how many D1 guys are on that roster. You'll see guys from division three. You'll see guys from division two. You'll see from, you'll see guys that from schools that you've never even heard of. And, 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 and it's so true. I mean, I, I, I say that, I mean, again, I'm somebody that, you know, went to a division one, but I don't preach that. I don't preach that. Hey, you got to be division one athlete or else it's not. It's not going to work for you. And it's not like that. If, if, if you're playing somewhere, get in where you fit in, where you're going to get a chance to to grow, where you're going to get a chance to play, where you're going to get a chance to get better, and they'll come find you. I mean, the scouts are everywhere. And, and if there's one diamond in the rough somewhere, they'll come find you. And, and I've always been a firm believer in that. I think sometimes we get caught up, especially nowadays. You know, I'm sure you've heard about the way baseball is, the way baseball academies are being ran and um, travel ball and all that crap. I mean, it's, it's just, it's a bunch of nonsense and I'm, oh, my kid's going to get looked at over here. Well, you know what? I mean, sometimes it's not about that. Is your kid playing? Is he playing every day? Is he getting better? Um, and, and the last thing you want to do is burn out kids at a young age. I mean, I was, again, I was different, man. I was, I, I love baseball. I wanted, I wanted everything to do with baseball every single day. And, you know, and, and, and that's just the way it was. I mean, I, I, I feel like I'm, I was one of a kind. And I was willing to do whatever it took to to get better every single day, even in high school. I mean, I used to tell my dad, hey, dad, take me to the park. Let's go. I got to go run. I got to go, you know, get a, my two mile run. And this is without anybody pushing me, without even anybody saying like, oh, you got to go do this. You got to go do that to get better. I just felt like that's what I needed to do. I was wired differently. And, and, and sometimes it takes a little bit of that. Right. I mean, to get to a certain point, you got to be wired differently. You got there's there's luck involved. There's there's you, you got to be wired mentally to to be able to sustain the, the grind of, of a long minor league season, a long baseball season, all that stuff. So, so yeah, I mean, it, it, again, it's one of those things where um, it, 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 we just, at, in this camp, we, we really try to preach, you know, hard work um, 
and 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 work ethic. If you don't have work ethic, then I don't care how good you are. I mean, it it, it won't matter. And and again, again, at the end of the day, I always t- I go back to that. I say, go look at big league rosters, man. Not everyone's Division One. Not everyone from Division One that gets drafted in the first round makes it to the big leagues. Like, you got to work. I mean, I have a good friend, Kevin Pilar, who's a perfect example. I mean, he was a division. I don't even know what Cal State Dominguez is. Division two, I believe. Um, and 37th rounder. He, he's my, I mean, he's got close to 10 years in the big leagues now, man, because that guy works his ass off and he, he's done everything, all the little things right to be able to sustain that and, and stay in the big leagues. You know, you mentioned travel ball and I, and that burnout thing to me is real <laughs> because I've seen really good players just quit. Mm-hmm. And so I'm wondering, is is travel ball doing more harm than, than good? I mean, you're doing your camp here in November. That's typically mm-hmm. right, the off season for baseball, but not with travel ball. I mean, these kids are playing year round. Is is that good? Oh man. I, I mean, to each their own, right? I mean, there's certain parents that that look forward to that. And I just feel like sometimes there's there's so many, you know. We we place these the this these type of pressures on these kids to go and win these these stupid rings that they get and this and that and I mean I just don't see the benefit of that. Again, I rather have my kid. I mean, my kid right now he's finishing up soccer season. He's gonna go into basketball season and then baseball season and follow that. And I now want him to be, um, you know, a multi sport athlete. I wasn't. Again, I was wired completely different. I wanted nothing to do with no other sports other than baseball. And but I see my son, and and he's he's seeing the success in soccer. He's seeing the success in basketball. He's seeing the success in baseball. And I'm like, perfect. Like you know, like I just want you to just stay occupied as much as possible, play as many sports. And and when I and when baseball season comes, we lock it in, and it's and it's fun, man. It, 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 there's no. Uh, I feel like the burnout comes when when you stop having fun when your when your son or when your kid says stop, starts looking at this as a uh, here we go again like you know and you see so much um, sometimes coaches you know yelling at their players and I see it at the at the age of seven eight years old and I'm like what are we doing like what what really are we doing like are we even are we even about the kids or are we about winning. Because right now it's about winning, 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 winning. And we forget about the fundamentals of the game, like getting them ready for that next level. And and I think that's some that's that's where we go wrong sometimes. And again, to each their own. There's some parents that like playing baseball year round. Hey, more power to you. But it's it's one of those things where I always say this, your eight year old isn't going to the big leagues tomorrow or to, or the next day after that or in a year or two years. Like it's, it doesn't work like that. And. And I get it. They see all the money being thrown at it at kids in, in the big leagues and stuff like that. A lot of guys making big money, Division One and uh, NIL deals and all that stuff. I'm sure they see all of it. And and parents kind of you can get warped into that into that world. And I think the last that's that's to me it's 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 not what you want to be warped into. You just kind of want to let it happen. If it happens, it happens. I I mean I've always said this. Do I want my kids to play in the big leagues? Heck yeah, man. I mean it'd be a, a dad's dream, you know. But if it doesn't happen. I'd rather see him being successful at, at school and, and finding it something that he loves and he's passionate about and gets his degree and and, and, and makes his life. I mean, and, and I think that's that's the biggest thing, just providing for them as much love and support and and letting them know, hey, like, you know, one of the little things that I've done as a parent is, you know, before soccer games, I'll pull him aside and I just tell him how proud I am, him, give him a kiss in the cheek and say, go out and get him, man. Like, go out and have fun and and pay attention and, and be alert and stuff like that. And I think that, honestly, I haven't seen my son um, give me a big sign of relief, like, a, okay, like, we're, we're good. Like, it, you know, it doesn't, I'm trying to kind of psych him out of being stressed out or because it's a big game or anything like that. It's like, hey, man, I'm already proud of you. Whatever happens, you can't control the score or anything like that. And I think sometimes parents get so caught up on results and results and results. And, oh, he went two for three or he went three for four or he went 0 for four. Who cares, man? Like, these kids are not... They're not machines. I mean, guys in the big leagues go 0 for 4. They have bad skits for 20 for uh, 20 at bat straight or 15 at bat straight or three bat started. It, it happens everywhere. And if we start putting this type of pressure on young kids, then I feel like that's where we lose them. Uh, we have a few more minutes here w- with Ricky. I, I just uh, so at this camp, you have current and former major leaguers that come in. Ricky, I, I mean, looking at just that. Cal State Fullerton team. Uh, I mean, you had some major leaguers on there. 
is it easy for you? Like, did you play with like Justin Turner and like Kurt Suzuki? Were, were they mm-hmm. on that Cal State Fullerton team that won? Like, yeah, how they easy were. Is, how easy is it for you to hit up these former teammates and be like, hey, come on, you got to do me a solid. Come out to this camp. <laughs> no, I, I try and stay out of the way. I mean, I played with Zook. Obviously, he was my catcher at, at Fullerton and, uh, uh, Red Turner was our, our second baseman there at the time, and him and I roomed together for three years. Uh, so, but no, man, I, I honestly try and stay out of the way. I kind of, you know, I know they got their stuff going on in, in off seasons and, and families and wives and stuff like that. But, you know, I, I kind of, you know, have a, um, you know, I reach out to certain guys, and then the, the rest of the guys, I, I, I like bringing in, a, you know, current or former minor leaguers guys that can relate to 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 these kids you know and, and it's not it's not about a, hey i'm gonna go find the biggest stars to come and do this it's more i want guys that are gonna want to come and do it and, and stay here and, and be able to provide for the next three hours and and not that those, those guys wouldn't but i know they have their stuff going on and i don't like to bother them but um but yeah i mean it, it's like you know last year we had sergio romo and he brought his you know three world series rings and and, and kids got a a kick out of that and, and seeing those those giants uh, uh world series ring um you know this year we'll have jesse chavez and 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 we'll see if he brings his atlanta braves ring with him so it, it, i feel like kids uh, as you know i mean i feel like as adults you get a kick out of seeing those rings and, and seeing what they look like in person and um and and uh, another guy that that i mean i hope we're, we're able to get him this year and he's another east la kid or um uh city terrace i believe uh Noe ramirez um he he's another guy that that has come in the past, and I don't know if he was going to be able to make it this season or or this year or not. But another guy that that becomes very relatable to the guys, and I think the biggest thing is when you see these guys interact with you know the Romos, the Chavez of the world, JP Crawfords, and they're so engaged with these kids. And I think it goes a long way for these kids to be able to say, "Man, like you know what? I was just getting lessons from from this guy, a free lesson from Jesse Chavez on what to do and what to make better as a pitcher." JP Crawford a couple years ago was beyond amazing working with the infielders and i and alan trejo is another kid who who um who has come but he's out currently out playing in mexico right now so so he's not going to be able to to make it this year but i mean yeah i mean i've been blessed man i mean i have a great crew running the the batting cage station in al quintana who played uh, at cal state northridge played a little bit in the toronto blue jays organization eddie camacho who helps him played in the mets all like san fernando kids and and stuff like that so it's almost like we're all bonded together. I mean, we all come from like similar backgrounds and, um, and it's all like, again, it's always a special day when you're able to do something like that for the community. Ricky, that your camp is invite only. So if there's mm-hmm. a young kid, maybe he's in junior high or just starting in high school, how does he get your guys's attention? How does he get invited to your camp? Like what, what would you recommend? Oh, I, I think it's it's one is um, I think uh, well, we've done it. We, we're trying different things, Juan. Honestly, the mm-hmm. the first three three camps that we had, we kind of the first one we had, we just opened it up to like all the inner city kids of like the the current like you know Garfield, Roosevelt, Huntington Park, Southgate, and then kind of you know they had to do a whole letter and write why they should be invited, and we read all of those and kind of you know it was hard eliminating some, bringing some others in, and stuff like that. So. We've kind of we're trying different ways. This year we went invite only, and and I, I think the the biggest thing is 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 you know if you're an inner city kid and and have a good relationship with your coach, um, we reach out to the high school coaches and and just making sure that hey like put leave one leaving a good impression on your high school coach and and your coach will say hey like this this is a kid that I recommend coming to your camp and kid that I know will benefit from from your camp because we've had coaches say. I've heard of players that, you know, that, that are pretty good. And I, and I, and we, we asked the coach and they're like, you don't want that guy in your camp. So don't be, don't be that guy as we, as we call it. Right. I mean, don't be that guy, be, be a guy that, that that's coachable. That's, that's willing to go out there and, and, and work hard. And, and it's going to really take something out of coming to the camp. And I think at the end of the day, um, Beto Durango does a good job of staying in touch with all the coaches and, and, and making sure that the coaches uh, are um, in line with what we're trying to create here and, and I think that's that's the, that's the biggest thing. And and I think uh, um, if that happens, then you know, chances are good that you're going to be on the on the next one. All right, Ricky, we're going to end the show the way we always end the show. We do a series of rapid fire questions that we like to call our kickback questions. If you want to give me a, a longer answer, by all means, you can go ahead and and do so. Um, you're an East Los Angeles kid. 
you had Dodger Stadium in your backyard. Was there ever a point of view that thought maybe I might play for the Dodgers? Do you regret not having an opportunity to play for the Dodgers? Or was <laughs> Toronto too good for you? No, man. I actually, when I got released, um, uh, Andrew Friedman was one of the guys that reached out to my agent and I went actually through a bullpen at Dodger Stadium for them. And they didn't sign me, man. So I kind of still hold it against him a little bit. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. <laughs> right, right, right there. Right. I mean, but how was that? Was the bullpen session at Dodger Stadium? It was. Yeah, it was in the off season, and um, and I had just gotten released by the Jays and then I was released by the by the Giants. Um, because I, as soon as I, I was released by the Blue Jays, um, the Giants came calling and I, I signed with them right away. And um, it was weird. I'm not going to lie, man. I mean, walking to my first <laughs> spring training uh, camp, uh, big league spring training and seeing, uh, you know, the blue and orange or the the, whoa, the, the <laughs> black, the black and orange uh, hanging in my locker with Romero in the back was like different. Obviously, growing up a Dodger fan and stuff like that. But then at the end of the day, I was like, you know what? This is business. This is where it brought me. So be it. And And just being in the same clubhouse as like the Brandon Crawfords of the world, Madison Bumgarner, Buster Posey, Hunter Pence, Bruce Bochy, Dave Brugetti, and, and having those guys, having, having Willie Mays in our clubhouse like every single day was beyond special, man. It was, even though I never made it to the big leagues with them, it was it was really cool being a part of that organization. And after I got released by them, um, you know, I, I, I asked if, you know, if or my agent got to work and we got a bullpen session done at Dodger Stadium and, they had their front office people there and and and, it, and unfortunately it didn't happen man I, I i did at one point in my life i wanted to wear that dodger blue i'm not gonna lie i really did and i never got a chance to play at dodger stadium as a big leaguer and and i said man even if it's spring training i i would do anything to to just wear that dodger blue but it didn't happen you know a lot of kids nowadays i feel are more fans of players than there are teams were you like that when you were growing up did you have a team or was it there were no, players it was the Dodgers. It was Daryl Strawberry and Eric Davis. I'm not gonna lie; those were my two guys. Uh, you you grew up in that area, man. Yeah, I, I really did. was expecting. <laughs> I was, when Strawberry came and had Eric Davis, yeah. Cal Daniels was in that outfield. Yeah. I thought, oh, we're gonna do it, and it just yeah, man. It just that didn't was that was out. that was that was like my that was like my uh, my era right there, where I was you know Brett Butler in center field, yeah, and stuff like that. I mean, uh, yeah, it it was cool. Um, I got to ask you this because we're big fans of the Mexican league here. You had a cup of tea with Los Toros de Tijuana, right? I did. Yeah. What is the biggest difference between uh, the, for the Mexican baseball league and MLB? Oh man. Energy. It's different out there. It's different. Yeah. It's completely different. Yeah. There's just this, this energy in the ballpark every single day, especially for Toros game. I always say this, if you have a chance to, to go check out a Mexican baseball game, go there. It's, Every time we were there, we were really good. I mean, we won the championship that year, but it was like 7,500, I believe, 8,000 packed to the house every single day. Banda playing, tacos. <laughs> the, I mean, beer starts at like four o'clock for a seven o'clock game. So <laughs> go, go. I mean, I honestly, I'm not going to lie. Every time we were at home, um, I'd shower really quick. I'd go up because there was a band playing after the game for like three hours after post game. And I'd, I'd go and grab a beer. Uh, a michelada and i'd sit there and i just listen to the band while they because you know we i was living in san diego and there was a van that would drive us from tj to san diego every single day and while the other ones showered i was already had a beer in hand and i'd sit there and i just listen to music i'm like this is this is this is what it's about here man it, 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 it was special my mom's from tijuana so that's what made me go there and play there and, and just represent her um, um, and, and it, it was really special, even though it, again, I, I mean, it wasn't my style. I mean, I wasn't pitching very much and I was like, you know what, I, this is taking too much time away from my kid at the time. I only had one. I was like, it's, it's time for me to go home. I, I, I I'm done with this. And yeah, I mean, but at, at the end of the day it was, it was special for a month and a half. It was cool to meet some of the guys. Some of those, like, some of those guys come to the camp nowadays. Alex Sanabia was one of them. Mark Serrano, who's going to be coming this year. Uh, he was another big time pitcher there. So, yeah, man, I mean, it, it, it was awesome. I mean, I highly recommend the energy. Uh, it's different. I mean, they have cheerleaders, they have mascots. They have a lot of people running through the field, and, and it's pretty funny. But it, it's good entertainment, that's for sure. Uh, were you, are you in on the World Baseball Classic? Yeah, I, I am. I mean, I think that uh, I, 
I love I love it. I mean, you see the energy, right? I mean, guys, yeah. uh, big league guys have come out and said they come out and said I'd rather win a WBC title than a World Series just because it's for my country. You you've yeah. heard guys say that, which is insane. I mean, but at the end of the day, you know how much you see. I think w- the whole world sees how much it means to a small country like the Dominican, to Venezuela, to Puerto Rico, to Mexico. Like you see it all. I mean, we saw. Mexico this year do their thing and, and everyone was rooting for them. I mean, you saw everybody uh rally uh behind uh Benji Gill and 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 mm-hmm. and and those troops. I mean, it was it was awesome to watch. It just it stinks, man, because I feel like you know, you see guys getting hurt, you know, post that tournament and you know, Shohei Otani being one of them. And um, and and then obviously the questions begin. Is is this good for for the players? And are they putting too much stress on their body early on in spring training? So there's all these question marks. But then you kind of sit there and you wonder. You're like, when if you're gonna have a tournament like this, when would you have it? And, and yeah. it, that, this one seems to be the perfect fit right now. Absolutely. Uh, two more. Uh, we are big fans of the male soap opera, which we like to refer to as wrestling. Were you ever in on the WWF slash WWE? Heck yeah, man. I was big time into it. Hell yeah. Uh, who, who was in your, your house? Uh, <clears throat> I, I really liked Stone Cold Steve Austin growing up, man. I, yeah. I mean, I, that's one guy I used to follow. But if we go uh, way back then, oh, uh, man. I mean, there was there was so many. Uh, I mean, if it's one, it's the ultimate warrior for sure. Yeah, you're, you're a warrior yeah. guy. So yeah. what is your era? Are you the golden era or are you the attitude era? Ah oh, man, I was right. I, I think I was the golden era. Yeah, I, I, I think so. Yeah, I mean, Ultimate Warrior, Hulk Hogan, Ric Flair. Um, you know, the Rockers. Uh, I, I don't know if you got. I don't know <laughs> if you guys Sean have seen. Michaels. Yeah, I don't know if you guys see those, those shows on on Vice Television that they. they have oh those, yeah, those those are really good, man. It brings me back. Like every time I watch one of those, I'm like, whoa, like. You know, Some of those are pretty dark, Ricky. <laughs> really dark, yeah. Dark side over the ring. That's why it's called that. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I mean, I, 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 I'm like, wow. Like you know, at the time when I was growing up, you're watching these guys go out there and perform. Little did you know what were they were going through behind closed doors. You know, from like throwing the clown to crush <laughs> to the, you know, the the giant guys like that, the, the giant Gonzalez, and yeah. I mean, there's just so many, man. Brutus the Barber, Beefcake, man. I mean, all that stuff. Yeah, I was into all of it. Damn, you ain't lying, Ricky. Yeah, you're dropping the knowledge here. Those, oh, those yeah, are, you're you're pulling out some names, deep names, not yeah, on man, the yeah. surface there. Yeah. Uh, last one. We end the show the way we all uh, with the same question. We are big. Um, we're big fans of the cultura here, and in particular, taco culture. So, being that you're an Islos kid, we need to know what is your favorite taco, and where do you go to get that taco? Oh man, uh, and, and this is funny. There's a there's a guy on Atlantic Tacos del Guero in yes. east la um um that's that was my guy so where i grew up he started off a little taco stands right next door to my house in a driveway and it was just a little taco stands him and his wife they were charged 50 cents a taco that's how much they were and i remember i used to like save up my money and i'd run i'm like mom i'm not eating dinner i'm not eating your dinner and he's like <laughs> ¿Qué, qué pasó, cabrón? No, it, 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 and i'm like no nah, i got i got like three dollars i'm gonna go eat some tacos con tacos el huero and now he's grown into this like you know he's grown his business man and 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 i respect the hustle i respect him so much i actually have a i did a nike commercial where um we he was featured in it he he okay. came out in it because i went i, I said there they asked me they're like hey do you want to go we want to show the you know what east la is all about i was like perfect i got the perfect taco guy so we went to his lonchera and everything right there on atlantic and they filmed and we did some stuff it, it was it was really cool and and to this day i still follow his instagram page so if i'm ever in east la that's where i stop and get tacos de carne asada or tacos de chorizo so is, is carne asada your favorite or are you a carne asada, I, I, there's three carne asada chorizo and buche Oh, Buche is so underrated. Buche is <laughs> so good. If if I ever see Buche, that's what I go with. I, yeah, I, I go with Buche. Tortillas de maíz or de harina? No, maíz, bro. Maíz. Good answer. The man, that's yeah. the only answer. Yeah, that's I get a lot of hate answer. on this show because you know I'm a, I'm not a fan of the one, of the oppressor's tortilla, which is no, what no, I no. refer to as tortillas yeah. de harina. But yeah. yeah, I get a lot of hate for that. Yeah, yeah, no. Tortillas de maíz is the only way to eat tacos. Real tacos. Well, well, there you have it. We want to thank Ricky. Ricky, uh, I'm sorry that we went over. Uh, really no appreciate worries, man. My how pleasure. gracious um, your baseball camp. It's your fourth annual high school baseball camp. Uh, check it out, guys. If you have kids, I mean, look, you heard it here. 
This was no, I don't think there was a better infomercial for this. You want somebody who cares, someone who's going to give your kid attention and you want them learning how to play the game. Right. So Ricky, uh, where can our listeners, our viewers follow you on social media to get more information about the camp? I'm on a, uh, on Instagram on a, uh, it's uh, Ricky row two, four at Ricky row two, four on Twitter. It's at Ricky row at Ricky underscore row two, four. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So it's two different ones, but yeah, that's, that's where you find me, um, on, on, you know, posting some stuff mostly about my crazy ass kids, but yeah. And then things about the camp coming up. Well, we can't thank you enough for coming on and congratulations on the camp. Keep doing the work, man. Thank you very much. And I really appreciate you guys having me on the show. And a big thank you once again to Ricky Romero for joining us on the show. This episode of the bleed Lows podcast has been brought to you by betonline.ag where the game starts. Thank <laughs> you.